Hey, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you're from. Great to have you here. Hey, this is our first session with Terry Bean from Detroit. I'm so looking forward to it. And today we're going to be talking about Business Judo, one of the systems in the five systems of successful people. We're also hopefully going to uh, interview Sean Lee. Uh, he's part of TEDx Detroit, and he's got a great background. Um, he's won some awards, so it's, it's awesome to have him on board. So basically, the five systems of successful people. Look, the book's being sold all over the world. I'm so happy about it. And now we're getting into the series. And the reason why Terry Bean is coming on today is because he's becoming a certified coach as well. So he's going to become a system 1357 coach. And he's been doing business judo for years. So it's just a perfect marriage of us together in moving forward. So let's get Terry on. Let's introduce Terry. See if I've got him back here in the back room. Hey, Terry. What's, welcome. Hey, Scotty. Hey, man, I'm excited to be on the team, man. Thanks for the warm welcome earlier. And uh, yeah, just really, really jacked with, uh, with what you're doing, what you've done. And uh, it's always great to be associated with confirmed winners like yourself, my man. So thank you. Thank you. And reading your profile, you've been doing business judo. And one of the business judo habits is networking. You've been doing it since 25. Was that right? It's, uh, yeah, more like 96, but yeah, I started my own networking group back in 05, 06 here in the Detroit area, and it became one of the fastest growing and one of the very first online and real world networking groups on the planet, right? So we were, we were leveraging the tech to do local stuff, uh, to do meetups face to face, but also when you left, still be able to connect with new people almost like you do on LinkedIn or Facebook now. So this was back in the dinosaur days when LinkedIn still had six degrees of connections, right? Yeah, so I remember it, that. It was good times. Yeah, you can tell how long someone's been around if they know that reference, right? <laughs> oh, well, man. you know, it, but I read that you started doing networking at the age of 25 or something. Is that right? Or 23? Yeah, I had a uh, I had a buddy of mine who was selling computer networks. I was selling computer software training as a 24, 25 year old kid. He called me and he said, hey, I sell my name's Jim. I sell computer networks. And based on the fact that you're in training, we should do some networking. Maybe you can come to this networking group to, and we can hang out. And I'm like, bro, you just use the word network in three different contexts and I only got one of them. So slow down, <laughs> let's start over. And that's been, you know, a, a 25, half my life kind of run, man. It's been cool. And just quickly, uh, we'll introduce Sean in a second. Um, you also wrote a book on being connected. So well done. I did. Yeah, that was a good time, man. It was... Uh, I, you know, it's funny, you run enough events, you see enough of the mistakes that people make, and you just want to help them all the time. And so the easiest way to help somebody is to give them the information they need. And then someone said, well, why don't you write a book? And I was like, okay, smart guy, I can write a book. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. So I can have a, I can that's, do uh, it. It's, that's a decade old at this point. It's, got, it's due for an update for some 2020 online networking stuff right so we're doing it a little different these days with zoom and restream and all the fun face to face over video stuff yeah all right well let's uh i'll leave it with you to do an introduction let's introduce sean so if, let's uh go to the back room and introduce here he is way hey go on sean is. hey there they go how you all doing look at you money how you doing man you fancy as a I, I told I told Scotty when I said well, we're having Sean on, we're gonna bring him in. He's a great, great dude. But but I love Sean because he makes me look like I'm on time for everything. And I said if I'm not if I get there and Sean's already there, I know I'm in trouble. So I I appreciate you making me look right about that. And I got a lot of stuff. I got a lot of stuff to do, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> Listen, man, when you're out doing all the great stuff that you do every single day, and you probably got the same uh, affliction that I have, and Scotty might have too. You got one more thing, Itis, where you got to do yes. one more thing before yes. you hop out of something? Buddy, we trying to make it happen. We don't have much time left on this earth. So we trying to get it in. We trying to get all of it in. <laughs> I love that, man. I absolutely love that. It's so true too, man. We got to we got to figure out how to how to serve the people that are paying us 
serve the community that needs us and and be able to serve those who are supporting us and and i gotta tell you man one of the one of the key components of business judo is collaboration right and yeah. and you are doing some amazing amazing stuff there so let's by by proper introduction let me let me introduce you first and then i'm gonna get into the collaboration we'll talk a little bit about win 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 and we probably need to start with your positive mental attitude because i know that drives all of it but sean lee is a photographer he's been taking amazing corporate headshots high school shots uh some other family type work does a little bit of corporate work too uh, he's the director of photography for TEDx Detroit. He's been in that role for the last half dozen years. Uh, and, and I'll tell you, when we brought him on the team, uh, the energy and the dynamic of it changed in an instant because you can just feel his heart and everything he does. Um, he's also a member of the Professional Photographers Association, but he's not only a member, he's the 2022 Humanitarian of the Year we're going to talk about that and that collaboration piece. Uh, he also started his own photography-based conference called Rock That. Uh, and, man, this dude just lights up every room he walks into. So a warm welcome to Mr. Sean Lee. Well, thank you. Thank you, man. Uh, dude, I don't know what you expected, but I guess I got the right to check. Uh, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> you just keep doing you, man. I'm about to. I'm about to start donating well, guess, to you, bro. I guess you earned that check. I got to write that joker uh, when we done. You know what I mean? Rock that. And Scotty, it is a pleasure. Uh, it's a pleasure meeting you, man. And thank you all for having me. Thank you, dude. Rock that. We're we're excited about it. Oh, and I should mention just because y'all won't know this if I don't tell you, he got the dopest collection of Cole Hahn shoes you're ever gonna see. Right, oh, that dude, wow. he got some shoes, man. So it's pretty cool, man. You got style, brother. All right, so let's talk. You know, one of the one of the key components inside of of business judo is this idea of positive mental attitude, right? In in like I said, I've been working with you frequently for the last six years. Uh, if you've ever had a bad day, I don't know that anybody would ever know about it. Tell me, how do you stay positive and equally important? Why is staying positive important to you? How do I stay positive? Um, it is, if life is mission driven, um, then you have no other choice uh, but to stay positive, right? Self-serving stuff only lasts for so long. But when you are driven by mission, and the, the thing that brings me probably the most joy is service to people, right? So I'm a good old fashioned um church boy right and i just grew up in in an environment of serving people i've been invested in and so because i've been invested in um i feel this press and this this push and this tug to invest in people and to do so with joy right i am i am i am genuinely happy to be here you know what i mean um every day that that i wake up and i'm able to get up and make life happen I'm happy to be here. Why? Because there is absolutely nothing in life that stops you except you, right? So if I can get up and face the day and know that there is absolutely nothing or no one or no opinion that can stop my progress, money, money, I am excited. We getting ready to run the gambit and I'm not stopping. And if you're in the way, you might get run over. That's just, that's it, right? And so, dude, I don't want to be angry. I don't want to be disappointed. Every opportunity for disappointment in life is an opportunity to learn, an opportunity to grow, and to do so with a smile on your face. You know what I mean? Being uptight, being upset, being disappointed, and it happens in life. Don't get me wrong. But staying in that condition does not help you at all. Right. And so the only way to overcome is to is that I believe in this concept of speaking life. Right. This concept that death and life is in the power of the tongue. Um, and this is scripture. I ain't trying to go deep on y'all. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. What, what does that mean? That means that I'll have what I say. Right. The things that I've decided in life, I can either speak it or I can let stuff speak to me. And so this is this is this is what we do. And this is how we decide to go. 
and life's mission driven and money we waking up and even if i wake up slow because i just had a birthday and you know i'm getting a little older and i'm a little slower um and so i'm getting up a little slower and so but i'm still getting up with the smile on my face rock i that. love it man i love it i just saw our friend and uh fellow gentleman on the board for tedx detroit chris johnson talk about infectious positivity is related to serving others man yeah wow. you got to agree with that you live that they say tell us where you're from i'm from detroit michigan detroit michigan that's why i always rock the hat i want to let folk know that i am from detroit most Gotta people want to ask me about the, the Tigers. I, to be honest with you, I don't know much about, about what the Tigers are doing. I wear the D because it represents Detroit, baby. That's awesome. That's right. awesome. Hey, so I've seen you speak. We've shared a few stages in the day, and you get on there, man. And if you get on a roll, it reminds me of every movie I've ever seen that took place in a Baptist church where the preacher is up there and people are jumping up and down and hollering and doing their thing. Did you did you ever think about taking that path? You're a mission driven fella. How close were you to, to being on the pulpit? Well, honestly, um, I, I've been in, I've been this is something that a lot of people may not know about me. So here's a fun fact. Um, I am an ordained elder and I've been a praise and worship leader for the last 27, 28 years. Wow. Um, so I've led choirs, led praise and worship and all of that stuff for years. And so it's in me. Um, and so I just believe that um, my mission or my ministry has gone outside of the four walls of the church and if you are gifted and have a gift then it is for everybody and so it has been a blast and a ball um kind of exploring that aspect of it and and then also being in a place where you can learn about different cultures um of people different nationalities of people and how they receive um makes it more fun even when you deliver your messaging right to make sure that everybody has an opportunity to understand the spirit of what you're saying um and how to say it so yeah man i i am actually a preacher you are indeed <laughs> okay good and i did not know that. That. So that wasn't a that wasn't a leading the witness where the attorney already knows the answer to the question he asked right that wasn't that that was uh, I just learned something cool too. Um, yeah, but you know, um, and and the tag on to that, I think that that's also a good thing because um, I don't want to live a life where I just wear the fact that I am a preacher on my sleeve, right? Um, you you want your actions and you want the things that you do to speak to speak volumes to people, not necessarily just the words that come out of your mouth. Um, or the fact that you have gone to a church or uh, is an ordained elder, because that means nothing. That means nothing to people that are hurting if you're not relevant to folk, you know. So. Um, so, yeah, so that's that's a I think that's a good thing. Uh, you know what? I had a, I had a whole different conversation uh, direction going, but you just you just like I'm putting on my blinker. We're going to keep on that track right now. You mentioned the idea of, of sharing your gifts, right? And having them and giving back. And I was gonna talk about that for a little bit. You mentioned the idea of taking it outside the four walls of the church. We're gonna jump into this collaboration piece because you're doing something amazingly cool with an organization, a CRM company called 17 Hats, right? Yes. So we'll jump into the backstory of you getting into photography. But I want to I want to dial in into this sharing your gifts and what you're doing with some high school students and in that partnership, that collaboration. Can you talk about that for a few? Absolutely. Um, yeah. 17 Hats is a CRM software company that, and they started out serving the photography industry. And so for my own business, I use 17 Hats and it manages everything for me from um, um, back end communication and all of that stuff. And so. Uh, I have my conference and we have conferences and 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 17 hats has sponsored our conference. They've been a vendor at our conference um, and done all of this stuff. And then two years ago, two years ago, what happens is, is that George Floyd uh, dies at the hands of a police officer um, in Minnesota and and the country and the world erupts. Right. And so um, Donovan Janice, who is the owner of 17 hats and is from new zealand and um speaks with a cool accent accent much like uh scotty here does like i love to hear folk with accents just 
just so freaking cool. So I'm going to ask you to speak before we get off of here, Scotty. You're going to have to say some words for me. You know what I mean? Rock that. Um, and so what happened was is that 17 Hats had thousands of followers on Instagram, um, maybe somewhere in the 34,000 uh, people range. And, and they called his company. Some people called his company and said, listen, if you don't support this certain organization, um, we're going to take action against you. Right. Um, and so Donovan, being the person that he is, says, Sean, I don't know anything about this organization. Um, uh, and it was Black Lives Matter. He said, I don't really know much about this organization. He says, but Sean, we support you. We support MAP, um, our our organization that, that gives to all people and supports all people. He said, we support you. Um, and so what do I do? He asked me that. He said, Sean, I don't know what to do in this situation. You a black dude. A black dude was killed and the nation is on fire and I'm being threatened. What do I do? I said, Donovan, you tell them exactly what you told me. You have been supporting um, the cause and you've been supporting the cause through us. And if people want to have an authentic conversation, then then let's have an authentic conversation. So he did that and he opened up um, he opened up the door for people to come in and talk and nobody showed up. And I think the next day or the day after that, um, their Instagram page was erased just right. Um, they 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 went in and and. Instagram page was gone. So all of those thousands of followers was gone. But instead of getting angry, this is what I love about um, this is what I love about people coming together. Right. And us fighting isms and racism and all of that stuff. Donovan got emboldened and he said, well, listen, Sean, how do we how do we bridge this divide in this country? Right. He could have gotten angry and said, you know what? I don't want to mess with none of you all no more. He said, how do we bridge this divide? in the country and then he put his money where his mouth is um and he and he through our filter um has pledged more than 200 grand 200 thousand dollars um for us to start to have this conversation that brings people together and not spread people apart right and so he's funded that and it's been amazing through that we've done an after school program and we look for we look for students and we look for schools that normally fall through the cracks Right. There are a ton of entities and schools out there that have budgets and all of that stuff. But I wanted to find students who um, who were forgotten about. I wanted to find students who weren't invested in. I wanted to find um, failing school systems and things like that where kids were not invested in. And I wanted to let them know that, hey, we care about you all. And not only do we care about you, we're going to give you our very best resources. They didn't have to have we didn't we didn't care whether they had straight A's. Um, and all of that stuff. Most of them were missing school like crazy. Um, most of the, the, the kids in the school were failing, right? And we went in and not only did we provide education and photography, uh, we provided food every time we went because most kids in failing school systems that don't have any money go to school because that's a place where they can eat, right? And so not only did we just go and do uh, photography stuff, right? Um, we wanted to be well-rounded and give them everything that they needed to be successful. So not only photography education, uh, but inspiration. We brought in Southfield Mental Health, who provided uh, mental health guidance, right? Um, and strategies for going through difficult times for the students, things like that. Um, we let the, we didn't bring in just regular food. We had food catered in um, so that they understood that we were giving them our best and um, and we wanted them to feel like somebody cared about them, right? Uh, outside of just the regular normal stuff that they went through in school. And most of these kids had to walk to school. They had to walk through drug infested streets, um, rehab centers right across the street from the school. Um, they have to worry about their safety when they're coming to school. There was one young lady, one girl, um, 11th grade, who had to get up at 4.30 in the morning to catch four buses to get to school, right? This is every day. Um, and so what do you do? How do you how do you um, impact people who who fall through the cracks? Right. And so Donovan is 17 hat says, Sean, we are interested in this work. We want to bridge that divide. And we think that the best way to do that is to invest in people. And, and they keep making those investments, man. That's it's amazing. I've, I've you know, I'm close enough to you right physically. To, to see it, to watch it, to experience it. You had a you had a wonderful event for those folks. 
uh, where you bust them over to an unbelievable meal and evening. Uh, it's cool, man. It's such a it's such a great give back. But that's in your heart. Like you can't even walk into a Big B. For those that don't know, Big B's a three hundred shop coffee chain, right? On the order of Starbucks, you know, twenty five years ago. They're growing. They're doing things. There might be one near you soon. Look it up, Big B. They're out of Michigan. Um, can you go into a Big B and not buy the people that are in line coffee? Does that ever happen? Every time no. you're in there, man, there's yeah. like people. You just do that. I did it. I did it today. <laughs> did you? I did it today. Um, I did it today. You, dude, it just pays to be kind, man. When I, here's the deal. Like my story is, is that I'm here. I'm here because somebody looked past. They looked past my mediocrity and invested in me. Let me uh, let me tell this quick story real quick, and then I, because it goes right into it goes right into Big B, um, and the reason and some of the reasons that I do what I do. And so back when I first started photography, man, this had to be back in '99, maybe 2000, right? So I've been at this for a long time. Um, I bought one of the bur the first digital cameras. Um, the Joker didn't work well. It got hot after he had it on for so long, and and I was doing, a, I did an event at church where I was taking photos with this camera, take the card out, put it in the printer, print the uh, photos out and then sell them for like $10 or whatever it was, right? This was my launch into photography, right? This was my entry into um, photography. And dude, the, it was just bad, man. The photos was just, man, they were horrible, right? You just, you, it was a new venture. You started in life and the, it was just bad. And this this lady, her name is um, Etta Kirkpatrick. Uh, back then, before she got married, her name was Etta Knox. She was an evangelist. Dude, and she bought like 20 photos from me. Like at 10 bucks, 15 bucks each. I don't know what it was. 200 bucks, 300 bucks, whatever, right? But for me, it was enough to get me to go to the next day. You ever been in a place where you try something for a minute and then you'd be like, mm, this is not working out maybe I should do something else, right? That that investment of that 20 photos that she bought was enough to get me to the next day, right? To say, hmm, maybe I can keep doing this, right? She had no clue of where my career would be right now, um, what it would look like right now. Um, and fast forward, here I am. And so there are people that invest in you in your mediocrity. Um, and, and don't necessarily, they just invested in you. And that's just important to me, man. And so when I walk into a Big B coffee, dude, it's a $2 cup, a $3 cup. At most, it's a $6 um, smoothie, $7 smoothie, right? But the impact that it has on relationships, the, the walls and the barriers that it breaks instantly, right, is unbelievable, man. I, I'm going to tell you this quick story because, dude, it, 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 it messes me up every time. So I, I walked in the big, you know, I'm at Big B all the time and I'm at the uh, counter and a dude walks in big dude, this dude, like, I don't know, he about six foot 13, um, <laughs> whatever, seven foot 12, I don't, whatever he is, he's a big dude, big burly dude, long beard, biker dude. We would not have been friends on any other level um, in any other earth on any other world. Right. And so he walks in big dude, and I said, dude, I'm I'm at the front at the counter. I said, dude, what are you having? What you what what you gonna have for uh what, what you want to drink? And he looked at me and he said, What? I said, Hey, what you drinking? Um, he's like, You don't have to get me nothing. I said, dude, I'm getting this drink, right? If you don't mess around, I'm getting this drink, or we're gonna fight. And you know, I was being friendly about it, it was fun, right? And he looked at me, it, was, it, it looked at me a little crazy, but he let me get the drink. It was nothing but plain coffee. It was a plain super coffee, two dollars, right? And and back in those days before COVID, you went around the corner to pick up your coffee and to pump it yourself. So he went around the corner. I didn't see him, but I was paying for the coffee, two dollar cup of coffee. This dude, big dude, three hundred pounds maybe, tall, big biker, came back from around the corner, had his coffee. Um, a tear was coming down his eye. Man. I get emotional talking about it now. A tear came down his eye, he put his hand on my shoulder. And he said, nobody has ever bought me anything in my life, right? 
And so a $2 cup of coffee bridged a divide that was there, unspoken as it was, but it bridged the divide, right? And then, and so that day I made a friend, right? Separate sides of the spectrum, but made a friend. And so what I understand is, is that if you can go in and be kind and invest in people, oh man, the stuff that it does for you. The business that I have gotten just from investing in people, man, you would not believe, dude. Rock that. And so it has pushed this relationship that um, that I sort of have with Big B. And so there's some big things coming uh, with Big B. I can't really talk about it right now, um, but there are big things coming, right? And so, man, investment in people, right? I love that. I love that. Hey, Scotty, I know you're I know you're in here so you can hear me. But uh, Sean said he wanted to listen to you talk when he talks <laughs> about investment of people. Right. Would you would you classify that under collaboration and business judo or does that fall under the, the, the one man? Is that is that the one? Not well, the- yeah, the one in system one, three, five, seven is people, people first, people over everything. No doubt about it. And, you know, if you help enough other people win. Well, that's perfect business judo too, right? You know, it's that collaboration, it's networking, it's win-win-win situations, it's maintaining that positive mental attitude. You know, it's it's all of those things combined. So, you know, there's not one single thing that makes everything work. It's the combination. And you can do that combination any way you like. And what Sean says is absolutely true. Oops, looks like we lost Sean. He must have lost his oh, camera. Where'd he go? No, he's just lost his network. We're not done with you, Sean. (laughs) So there's no actual perfect formula for how to actually implement, say, the five habits, which is positive mental attitude, which is what Sean started with, or whether it's collaboration and network or win, win, win. You know, it's it's there's no oh, this is how you do the alphabet. It's just a bunch of letters, and it's up to you to make it work, right? And um, you know, you guys have been really good at creating in networks, which is perfect business judo. But yeah, well, the, the, actual, the actual chapter starts with if you help enough other people win, you'll win too. That's perfect business judo, you know. And, and to do that, what are the things you need to do, you know? So that's up to everyone individually. And I think I think Sean has laid out some really interesting cases for most of those things we just talked about. And you know, the fifth point that that you didn't mention, right? The the you talked about four of the five. Uh, well, maybe not. No, no, no. I, my apologies. No, we talked about, we still in business judo. I got, I was all excited about talking about sugary because Sean is one sugary dude, man. But that's, uh, that's weeks away. We'll, we'll get to that in a bit. Hey, Sean Lee, you're back. I'm we back. You, man. I'm back. Yeah. So, that was you all for a minute. And Sean's actually got some really good stories of how he's basically done all that. You know, how he's put people first, how he's created win-win situations. He's created a network. You know, he's leveraged off situations that are there and, and actually created his own networks as well, you know, and he's collaborated. But he started with PMA, positive mental attitude. And it's probably the most important ingredient. You know, m- most people say, you know, and, and I'm sure Sean gets the same sort of questions. Well, how do you handle adversity? They ask it in different ways, but how do you how do you respond or react when things go wrong? Because everyone has it happen. But see, the successful people have this ability to be able to turn negatives into positives, but more importantly, turn disadvantages and flip the narrative into advantages. And that's the essence of positive mental attitude. It doesn't mean things don't go wrong. It's not just smiling. It's actually attitude and working out how to flip the narrative. And that's what the essence of positive mental attitude is. And Sean's saying it in in all the same ways with his stories, right? He's been flipping this narrative. He's been doing perfect business judo. Uh, even if Sean hadn't heard the term before, he's actually practicing perfect business judo, which is awesome. So good to hear the stories, right? So well, that's why I picked him, right? When you yeah. when we were talking about doing this show, I was like, oh, well, there's only one guy I could think of for this. I'm like, hey, Sean, we're going to talk about business judo. He said, we're going to talk about what? I said, don't even worry about it, bro. You've been doing it your whole life. You already, you don't have to read the book. You know the stuff viscerally, man. You just do it. This is this is how you live, and I I just I, I admire you and I appreciate the heck out of you just because of who you are, man. You're yeah. just 
solid and i love that very cool uh, well I, I've, I've heard about it so i'm starting i'm i'm starting to read the book now so uh rock it. that this is pretty that's cool that's it that's yeah. it Hey, there we go. I saw you. I saw you uh, in a photo today, earlier, on the floor, wrapping yeah. some stuff that looked like you were sending some goodies somewhere. What's uh, what's the story with that? Because that's a that's a three hour old story now. Yeah. Um, so we have with with uh, with everything that we've been doing. You know, uh, I am in the industry of photography. I I I love. I just give to people. Right. And so I'm going to be a giver. And so because I'm a photographer, I wanted to find a way uh, to give back to people using the gift that I have um, in life. And so uh, through all of this, Canon, um, the photography company, the, the camera company, Canon, uh, has gifted us and given us one hundred and twenty thousand dollars worth of gear. Right. To invest in people. And so um with our program that we do, our after school program that we do with uh, middle and high school students, um, that gear is used to instruct them and to teach them. But also, um, we have people doing stuff in different states. And so, uh, there's a gentleman who teaches high school students uh, for the University of New Orleans, and it's a program called Upper Bound. And he was, he called me to ask me about our organization, whether we had a discount code for a camera store. And he was getting ready to buy five brand new cameras. And I said, dude, We've been given cameras by Canon for the very reason that you're doing. So why don't we get you those camera bodies? And these are Canon 1DXs. These are $3,000 camera bodies, uh, along with the batteries, the chargers, the straps and everything. And so um, out of all of the gear that Canon uh, sent us, he needed five of them. So we, we packed up five and shipped five to New Orleans to teach the next generation of creative professionals on pro equipment, right? Um, I wish I had this stuff uh, as a as a as a grown man starting out. I wish I had this kind of equipment. These cameras um, are what's are what Super Bowl photographers use to capture the Super Bowl, um, and and we are now sending these this, this level of of professional camera body for the high school student to learn on. Right. And not only that, sending them to re repressed areas where kids don't normally have resources and giving them once again our best for them to learn on. So that's what that's what I was doing today. I actually got down on the floor, maybe did a couple push ups and then packed the box, you know, um, <laughs> and we shipped that off to New Orleans. <laughs> that's, that's awesome, man. I, uh, you know, I talk about. I tell you, we did the we did the TEDx Detroit a couple of years ago, and one of the one of the talks I gave a little short talk about creating a positive ripple, right? And and you're a dude that creates such a positive ripple so frequently that by the time it gets over to Scotty in Australia, he'll be able to surf on that thing, man. You doing you doing good stuff. Scotty's a Scotty's like a world champion surfer too. In addition to like being an awesome business builder. Right, oh, that's like, dope. Yeah, that's dude, dope. Dude. Mm -hmm. Rock trophies yeah. and stuff. Yeah. And maybe and the, old, the older I get, the better I was. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> ain't that the truth? <laughs> waves were taller. Like that. The sharks like were more. That. You'd yeah. surf the right waves through. were bigger. Yeah, <laughs> very cool. Yeah, man. You know, it's about. Um, I think I remember that year. That the the talk that I did was becoming more than just. And I don't know if you guys know where I come from in the photography industry. Um, you're just a photographer, right? The, you, I got used to the, you know, people saying, well, Sean, all I need is, right? All I need is a photo. In other words, what they're really saying is um, all I need is your cheapest service that you got. And and so um, I got tired of that, right? You, you get tired of being discounted, right? Um, and so the, the, the idea of becoming more than just was not only um, for me business, but giving back. And then how does giving back actually help business? So I authentically served community. I authentically wove myself into my community, into society. I cared about my city. Right. And at a time when Detroit, the largest municipality to ever go through bankruptcy, right, was in a place where people didn't want to spend money. Um, I had to figure out and innovate a business model, right? I had to innovate. So as a black man in the photography industry, I didn't fit the existing model. 
right? I didn't have a brick and mortar store. I didn't have a velvet couch or neither did I have the big frame to project images into and sell thousands and thousands of dollars worth of wall art. That just wasn't my model. Um, but I was tired of being discounted. So we reinvented the model while investing in people. And you know what I found out is that people want to do business with people that they um, like, trust, and relate to in some way, shape, or form. So because I authentically love people and I authentically give back um, to people and to youth and serve my community, I kind of became this advocate for the city of Detroit, right? And so we did tours that brought kids um, from Detroit area and we took them on tours to historical districts in Detroit. We got buses and right and took people. And then what we do, we would pair those kids with like city council members in Detroit and make those connections. And everybody would go on a bus tour and and take photos together. And they had this experience um, that was bigger than life. Right. And so what happened was, is at a time when we were going through bankruptcy, I became this advocate for the city. And so people who didn't even need photographs, they loved the city of Detroit. And if they love the city of Detroit, I became the advocate for it. And people wanted to do business with me because people love lifting up our kids. People love giving back to society and community. People loved Detroit and they wanted to do. They didn't need photographs right then. But whenever they needed them, I was the first person that they thought about. Right. And yeah. so it creates it creates that win 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 situation. Right. You serve people, serve your community, serve society. Um, and it serves you back authentically, right? Not as a not as a strategy to get over, not as not as something to, to take advantage uh, of people and try and make money on people. But when you authentically care about where you come from and care about people and serve them with your whole heart and give them everything you got, people give you everything that they got. Yeah, you know? uh, I don't I don't think you could have defined win 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 better than you just did, right? That's like the quintessential example of it. It's so dialed in, right? How do I how do I help you win, right? How do yeah. we help something bigger than us win? And how do I how do I win a little bit too, right? If we're not, you know, we can't we got you can't pour from an empty cup, right? So the idea that you got sick of being discounted makes a ton of sense to me. But the way that you wrapped it up in a in a manner that was going to serve so much more than just you, uh, yeah. you know, that's that's the definition of perfect business judo. As far as I'm well, concerned. think about it. I mean, really think about it. Right. People want to be people want to be served well. Right. And if you serve people well and take care of them, folk don't mind spending money with you. Right. And if you get into this, I always tell I always tell uh, people who are in our organization when we do training and teaching, never get it, never get to a place where you um, start negotiating little stuff with your clients. Serve them well. Charge what you want to charge. Charge enough and then serve them well. When people feel well served, they will always come back. They will shout your name to the rooftops, to the rafters. Um, and I'm telling you, it will multiply end on in yeah i uh i just saw a comment from princess castleberry do you know princess and brian they're here locally uh they're they're some really good folks man princess is an organizational uh Rock. she's like an organizational development trainer right she does some really cool some cool work makes brilliant presentations uh doing a lot of work in the uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion space as well. Anyway, I, she's right, man. People who you know, like you, know you, like you, and trust you, that's it, right? And, and a great way to get them to do more of that is what you just said, keep over delivering. So yeah. we are, we're getting to a point where it's, it's time to kind of wrap this little show up. Sean, how do people find you? How do people connect with you? Where's your favorite place to do the social media thing? What's your what's your platform? How do they see some of those great pictures that you've taken? I love I love the one of the young lady in the yellow where she's running, and you kind of recreated that with our friend Julie Barnes Mauer the other day, and I, that was just blowing me away. So yes. where, where where do they get more Sean Lee? Because you know what people um, are going to want more Sean Lee. Sean Lee Studios across all platforms. So that's S H A W N uh, L E E Studios with an S, right? Is uh, 
Instagram, Twitter, uh, Facebook. I spend most of my time on Facebook simply because I don't I don't have a prowess to be on uh, TikTok and and, uh, and Instagram and all of that like that. Uh, um, what, what did you say, Scotty? The older I get, the better I was. Uh, yeah, that's kind of where that fits right there. But people can find me there definitely on Facebook. Um, my dot com is Sean Lee Studios dot com. Um, you can check me out right there. Also, our um, our our organization, our affiliate, um, the Multicultural Association of Professional Photographers is we love photographers dot com. Um, you can also catch us there. Uh, you'll be able to see my TED talk where we talk about uh, what we do as an organization. Um, in photography and how we give back to society and make society better um, through education, um, through community service, through business training and all of that stuff that we do. So Sean Lee Studios. Sean Happy Lee way. Studios, wherever you find yourself, you can find him there too. I like that. Scotty, what uh, do you have any questions? You got any thoughts, anything you want to say to Mr. Sean Lee or ask Mr. Sean Lee? Uh, look, you know, listening to the stories was epic. Um, you know, everyone has a story and what you've done and created the journey you've gone on is very inspirational. So listen, Terry said, I've got Sean, you know, he's going to be awesome. And he was 100% right. <laughs> so wow, it's perfect. Don't make you know what you've been doing. I'm so happy that you came along and shared that story. Um, yeah, the world needs the world needs more people like you. And, you know, all successful people have had a journey. And you know, I guess the, the objective of writing things in a book is either to validate what they're doing is actually right or inspire yeah. or motivate them to start doing some of the things that you've been doing. Yeah. And, right. and you know, depending on what your definition of success is, is to how you leverage all this, whether it's in business or to do it, um, you know, spiritually or whether it's to do it just for lifestyle, it's still everyone's own definition of success. Everyone has their own reasons. So, but what you said and the stories you gave were, were just perfect. Right. Hey, real quick. And I don't know, when do we have to end? Are we, are we ending in like 30 seconds? Or no, no, there's no, no specific ending time, mate. So, nope. um, but we can really like to wrap up in about 45 minutes. And I think we've been about 40. So, I can't yeah, we're, yeah, we're, yeah, we're, we're barely, we're not, we're not there yet, John Lee. What do you got for us, man? Well, here's, here's the deal. And this is one of the things that kind of cemented it for me. I, I am sponsored by, um, I'm on the speaker, the speaker team for an organization called Miller's Lab. Miller's Professional Imaging, right? Miller's Lab is the largest print organization in the United States. Um, and they are so because they are very, very good. And so um, when my introduction to them was going to a conference years ago and and I didn't have like beast mode camera stuff and I had to save up money to go to the conference. And so my hotel was like miles away and Miller's would do these, these parties for photographers, right? And all of these named superstar photographers came to the Miller's party. All of them did. And Miller's had a bus pickup at the host hotel. Well, I, none of them brought their camera. Well, I wasn't going back to my hotel miles away to come back to get on the bus. So I just stayed. So guess what? I had all my gear, right? All of it, like all my gear. All these superstar photographers was all dressed up. Nobody had their gear because they weren't going to take pictures. They was going to eat and the party, right? And so I get on the bus and I'm sitting next to this guy. I don't know why. I, I don't know why I sat next to this guy, but he's a great guy. He starts talking about his daughter, um, and and, and they go to Mizzou, right? And and he loves his kids and he loves baseball and we are just kicking it and chewing the fat and i get off the bus i'm one of the last people off the bus i get off the bus and they say sean you know who you were talking to i said no but he's a great guy they said that's the owner of miller's lab he just flew his crew over on his private jet oh really oh okay and so we continue on with the night and we having dinner and I got my gear and it's a heavy bag and nobody else has theirs. And I'm discounted people looking at me and just turning away and because I'm nobody. Right. Um, I'm absolutely nobody. And then it gets to uh, time for the group picture of everybody. And guess who is the only guy who has his camera. Right. Money. You can't. I, I, you cannot make this stuff up. People are people, right? I don't care where they come from. I don't care how much money they have, right? If you talk to them about the stuff that moves them and that they are passionate about and you are, are genuinely invested in, you don't need money. You need what you need, what the things that money brings, right? The favor, 
um, that money brings. And so guess what I found out? He is the guy that loves the group photo. He is the group photo guy. And I got my camera and I'm taking the group photo. Money, that was the hottest group photo on earth. Do you know that that night set me up to be sponsored by Miller's Lab and to have them take care of me for everything? When we started our conference, and, 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 I, and I know we ain't got a whole lot of time, um, I wanted to make our very first conference free um, for everybody who came, right? I wanted to make it free. That was crazy at the time. Nobody was doing a free conference. Sean, are you crazy? Have you lost your mind? But when you're trying to change culture, right, of people of color and getting them to invest in themselves and getting them to invest in education for themselves, you have to invest in them first, right? I went to Miller's lab and I said, listen, I wanna do something crazy. I wanna have a high level three day conference. I wanna have motor coaches and buses go downtown Detroit. I wanna have a closing party. I want all of this stuff, right? And I wanna make it free. And you know what they said, Sean? We got you, right? We got you. We brought in some of the world's top level speakers. Um, we had buses go downtown Detroit for photo walks. We had a closing party. They paid for every single dime, right? Um, because of that initial start to a relationship where you just kind to people and interested in who they are. Money, money, listen here. Y'all rock that right it's it's awesome. if you want to get stuff done you can get stuff done right and folk out here looking for a paycheck they waiting on money to, to start money start the process if it's in your heart go and do it be kind to folk invest in people right and treat people right no matter where they come from that was a Rock. perfect business judo story by the way that did, was it that did all five habits in one story right all five habits wow. you know so that wow. was perfect so the only objective of the book is that people understand that it's a true thing to do it's actually the right thing to do to be successful so that's mm. the difference you know this is what successful people do like you now i'm wondering wow. when sean's book is coming out man I, that's the question <laughs> been running through my it's head for be, the last five minutes we call business judo number two right <laughs> <laughs> so can we call it business judo I think it's business business too, too, like by Scotty. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, but listen, we might start to wrap up. Terry, if you want to do a bit of a close and um, thank Sean and, and, and we'll let everyone go that's watching the live. Yeah, for thank sure, for sure. Having. So I, uh, I listen, you can see why I spoke so highly of Sean Lee when he was coming on, when I pitched the idea to Scotty, uh, and, and now you know, right? Y'all weren't ready for it. Now maybe you're starting to be. The one thing that I can tell you from firsthand experience, and there's photos of him captivating 4,000 people at a time, leading them through different exercises, different poses, different moves to get ready for some amazing photography opportunities. But I've had him come into clients where there's 10 people, 20 people, and do one-on-one -on -one headshots and corporate group photo, and everybody thanks me. Why? Because he makes it that much fun. It's hard to not be uh, feeling full of greatness when he's around. So I love it. I'm excited about it. Sean Lee Studios, whether you're on the Twitter, the Instagram, Facebook, whether you're looking for SeanLeeStudios.com, go figure that out, man. Go check it out. We've got a couple more of these events already scheduled. We're going to be on the Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. I got corrected today. It's not Eastern Standard Time in the summer. It's Eastern Daylight Time. Uh, so I learned something today. That was fun. Uh, next week, we're going to have my original podcast partner, Janet E. Johnson. Janet and I have been doing a show together for seven years. We actually went to high school together, too. It's kind of cool. We're going to talk about time duplication. We're going to talk about how do you create content that you can repurpose? How do you manage outsourced individuals that are doing the tasks that you shouldn't be doing because you got higher and best use? We're going to talk a little bit about how do you automate some of those everyday processes so you're not even wasting time doing it. Scotty's all about how do you work smarter, not harder. 
we just talked about system uh, one of the five systems in Scotty's new book. I know he showed it, but he didn't know I was going to show it too, right? So five systems of successful people by Scotty Schindler. Working smarter, not harder. Sean Lee, you are an amazing individual. Thank you so very much for being my first guest. Scotty's done this a few times, but I appreciate you, brother. And I'm looking forward to seeing you face to face soon we'll come out here and do some boat time thanks man i appreciate you all thank you all for having me. all right thanks all all right we'll wrap it up hey thanks everyone for coming uh it's been awesome to have everyone along and we'll see you all uh next week talking about time duplication excellent all right good to see you we'll wrap this one up thanks everyone <laughs>